Alright, so you guys seem to enjoy the top 5 video for the top 5 art slooping servants, so I thought I would follow it up with the top 5 single target art servants and you know see if you guys enjoyed this then maybe move on to like quick then maybe the buster servants and then maybe we can do some other top five videos because they're kind of like the tier list discussions but a little more i guess traditional right because they're like top five top tens you know but i'm still doing it over here on the wiki all right you can't make me do the transitions i refuse to do it but if you guys enjoy daily fgo content that is the grind your boy is on and if you really enjoy what I do, you can click that like button and that subscribe button to help your boy out. I am on that road to 100k and every little bit of support helps me out. If you want extra content, you can go to my Twitch where I stream every weekday. Well, mostly every weekday. I do miss a day every now and then because, you know, the college life does have your boy insanely tired. And then finally, if you want some extra content, you can click that join button and become a channel member. But with that being said let's not dilly dally and let's go ahead and get in here and i cannot believe just said dilly dally like i'm actually 80 years old dude i am actually a boomer anyway so let's go over the honorable mentions first before we actually dive into the top 10 so the honorable mentions that i have for this video is bb astrea and galatea because even though we're looking at this video where all of the summonable servants are np1 and the free to play servants are np5 if we look at bb over here on the like little damage chart her NP5 damage is absolutely caca poo poo stinky, right? Like her damage is not very good. Granted, her NP is pretty powerful because it gives you the entire party 20%, but I just don't think as good as BB is with these skills, you know, especially skills like this that are actually just really, really good. And this is very good for party utility. I just don't think she quite cracks the top five. And that should tell you how crazy the top five is. Estrella also just basically a very, very solid kind of generic servant that just kind of sets out to do a job of just doing some pretty decent damage, you know, getting them crits and just being a pretty tanky servant as well because she's a ruler. I think she's just kind of like a basic definition of what you just want a solid servant to look like. And so I wanted to go ahead and give her a shout out for the top five, but she unfortunately did not make the cut. And then Galatea, if you guys come out to the streams, you guys know that I love using my Galatea because, you know, she's an absolute cutie patootie and I think she's really good. I think this skill right here is absolutely not, not that one, this one, no. It was this one. Wait, wait, what? Which one am I thinking of? Yeah, I'm thinking of this one. I was, I, I thought for a second it was invincibility. And that's why I was getting really messed up. Cause I was like, I know she has like a really good defensive skill and it actually is this skill. But I think this is really crazy because it, you know, just gives you two hits of absolute immunity with the defense plus the stackable guts. I think that's really, really cool. I think it makes her really fun to use. But again, she just doesn't quite cut it onto the list because I think she's a little bit too basic to make it on here. So with that being said, let's move into the top five starting off with number five and that is the dio scurry twins and this servant pretty much can make it on this list with this skill alone this kind of just turns them into a single target arts slash quick servant because it basically takes the weakness of the arts card that cannot gen stars and kind of the weakest aspect well i guess you could say the weakest aspect of a quick card is its damage but one of the other aspects of the quick card that kind of needs help the np generation and it fixes both of them because it allows their quick cards to guarantee gen at 10 percent np when they attack with them and they generate 10 guaranteed stars of the arts cards and that's absolutely nuts and it's it's not like they had bad cards to begin with i mean you guys know when I do my servant, servant reviews, we talk about the hits on the servants and their hits and their natural NP gen and star gen are actually fine already. Like they were already really, really sought out in the hit department. And then the first skill just makes them absolutely nutty broken. And then everything else here is just like icing on the cake. Like, as you guys know, different buff types multiply into each other. So they're getting just extreme amounts of damage for not only themselves, but the entire party with that. And then just again, a little icing on the cake is that they get like a minor little buff for their cards that are already pretty good and even though it's a kind of a low value you also get like these crazy like overcharge effect where they are like just neutering the enemy's arts and quick resistance and did i mention they have an omni pierce on their np like this is just an absolute like oppressive offensive unit the only real weakness i think with them is that like maybe their buffs are a little low right like maybe you could critique them that the buffs are a little low but they have so many different things going on like their cards are already so good already they're buffing them they're fixing up the weak parts of them and then they're like kind of further increasing their damage down here like maybe you could say this doesn't activate first and maybe that's a little annoying but like <clears throat> like they're already just a super solid servant overall so 
yeah, we're going to go ahead and start off with them at number five. Then we're going to go ahead and move into number four, and that is MHXX. Now, I wasn't originally going to have her at number four, but then I came over here and I peeped her damage after her NP buff. And yeah, like that's pretty disgusting, right? Like 50,000 at NP1 because... Again, just to reiterate, we're looking at the summitable servants at NP1 and the free to plays at NP5 because that's kind of what you would expect to look at them at. I think that's a little fair to look at them because, you know, you pull the, you know, free to like the free to plays are free NP5s. Right? So why not give that to them? And then, you know, I don't want to be, you know, giving the pay to play servants, you know, too much of a buff. So we're looking at them in NP1 because I think that's fair. But if you look at her special damage mods, dude, she starts at bare minimum at 75k and 151. And keep in mind that her special damage mods over here, the threats against humanity, like this is the hardest fights in the game, right? Like these are the big boy bosses. Like this is like your, your trees, your beasts, like all of the hard fights she excels in, right? And then she has everything you would want in a good servant. She has pierce invincibility, a battery. She has good survivability with the invincibility skill over here, fat attack buff, and then the ability to kind of become a little bit of a star like burst servant although it's kind of odd that she kills her own star weight that's a bit odd but i don't know maybe we'll see something with that in the future maybe they'll make that targetable because i think that'd be pretty good like mhx alter but yeah like let's also not forget that this combos very well with castoria's buff because castoria also gives this same buff except a little stronger on her third skill and then you just look at her np and it's just an absolute giga nuke like especially lord to help any saber servants that you encounter that <laughs> Like, look, she ain't an archer, but, you know, you're bringing her over any archer because, dude, she's slam dunking them into the absolute ground. So even at NP1, she's literally just a beast. Like, she's a very generic servant, but she's an absolute beast of a generic servant. Like, they got everything going on with this servant, and it just makes you think how crazy are the next two servants. And, well, number three and number two are actually going to be Shiki Assassin and chloe archer right and that's because these two i think are interchangeable right like two and three here i think you could swap these two around because they both do like really good damage shiki i believe is around 50k if i remember correctly um at np5 that is the wrong slider bro i'm actually a big dummy dum dum i do not know how to act you know what fine we won't look at we won't look at excel there we go never mind <laughs> On the fly, you guys are witnessing that I'm absolutely just a bumbling idiot. But there you go. At NP5, she's actually 55k. And then Chloe's at like 40k, I believe. Yeah, 47k. So like their damage is both like pretty respectable. Like it's pretty fine. But it kind of just comes down to like, what do you value more in the servant? So Chloe, you get the fat 50% battery. You also get this insane crit star generation rate of 100%, which you guys will remember is really good on art servants because think about someone like Caskill who gives art servants the guaranteed 100% crit star gen for three turns and it turns their arts cards into star genning cards because it you know actually buffs that star gen value of 0% to 100%, meaning every hit here is a guaranteed star on the arts cards. And then that makes the quick cards and the extra attack gen just even more insane because they already have just built-in insane star gen. So Chloe just becomes like an absolute just <clears throat> monster of looping her NP. And then she becomes a monster at genning stars. And even though she doesn't have like the craziest crit damage, this skill kind of allows her to take advantage of that. And then it's just kind of like, is that something that you value over what Cheeky Assassin is over, uh, over here? And sorry, I clicked off and, you know, I was watching 5Ds earlier. I right, don't, don't be judging your boys going through a Yu-Gi-Oh phase. But anyway, if you look at Cheeky Assassin, her star gen is also not that bad because she's naturally an assassin and not only has this, but she has her base star gen of 6% adding up to 31.6% star gen. So she's not going to be doing as good as Chloe is, but it's going to be very comparable, right? Like it's not like Shiki's going to be falling behind. With Shiki, you're still getting like slightly better crit damage. But the thing that I think kind of makes Shiki a little more competitive in this, right, is like, do you value the omni pierce that shiki provides for herself with the pierce invincibility on skill one and then the pierce defense on her np do you value that more than what chloe's bringing to the table and that's why i think you can actually interchange the two of them right now i'm kind of holding chloe a little bit higher because i think her ability to like crazy loop her np and just be an insane star gen is pretty valuable right like i, I do value that a little bit more than uh, shiki having the omni pierce more so because the pierce invincibility is on the skill one 
if these were swamped and this was more readily, uh, readily available, because I think this is more useful to have up all the time than just this, whenever you want your NP, then I might change it a little bit. But, you know, Shiki also does have other uses that you could argue that does make her a little bit better than Chloe. Like you could say that her having the insta kill is actually very useful for people that don't have a very strong box because let's say you're having to fight a node where it's like a three, one, three node. Like we have those weird nodes where you just have like one enemy in a node and you can't consistently kill it with something in your box. Well, if you have Shiki and you have something like demonic bodhisattva or something you could try to reliably get an insta kill on some of those enemies and that might actually be something that's really good for people that have a weaker box not really going to be something you have to concern yourself about once you kind of build up your fgo box and you've got a lot of reliable servants to get clears done but i do acknowledge that she does have that in the back pocket but let's go ahead and look at the number one slot and this should absolutely surprise nobody it's it's melusine dude like melusine is actually cracked beyond all belief and the thing that actually makes this super nuts is that her third skill is not even in consideration for this list because her third skill turns her into a buster aoe servant so she's obviously not really taking advantage of this so with just skill one and skill two and her np she's already taken number one and that's because melusine and this is something i had to go double check before i put her up here i'm like well does her damage hold up at np1 like is she going to be doing good enough damage i don't know at 43k i think it's fine like even though she's being out damaged a little bit by someone like Chloe and by a pretty decent amount by someone like um, Shiki over here, I think the things that Melusine does and that she still has that really high NP damage at NP1 plus everything that she does, I think gives her the edge to let her sit at number one. And so if we just look at what she does, she basically just gets a big attack buff, a big max AP, max HP, sorry, I misspoke there, but then she also gets big dr for like three and maybe okay i might be gassing up a little bit saying these are big buffs but they are pretty decent in conjunction with each other right they do help out a lot like getting the dr plus the max hp helps her hp last a bit longer because it makes her tankier and then the 30 percent battery are all just a very generic good skill and then her second skill combined with her np pretty much means that she's always going to have stars available for herself to play around with so she's getting absolutely insane star weight like you should almost be feel like you're guaranteed going to be getting all of the stars on mellow scene and then she's refunding 10 stars per turn getting 10 immediately and every time she fires her np she's getting another 10 stars but that's not even the craziest part every time she fires her np she's getting at least 20 percent np gain back and i mean okay i know that we're not considering higher np levels of mellow scene but just to tell you guys from my own personal experience where i managed to pull an np2 mellow scene she can easily get to points where she's refunding like 200 percent of her np to stack this even further so even once some of her buffs down here wear out she's still just popping off her np repeatedly like it's once the girl stops she can't stop you know firing off her np or sorry i think i misspoke again when she starts firing the np she can't stop i think i said when she stops she can't stop that doesn't make any sense but when she starts firing her np she can't stop like you can't hold her back she's just stupid dummy nutty broken and then this lasts for five turns so you can just start piling on insane amounts of damage onto the enemy the only real bad thing i think that melusine kind of doesn't have is a crit damage buff like if you're using her as an art servant you can't use there's no crit buff for you to take advantage of but i think i understand why they did that because i think she'd be just stupid dummy broken if they did but kind of looking forward to like maybe a year maybe a year or two they slap a crit buff on this it's 50 percent three turns come on dw i'm begging you guys but yeah <clears throat> That's going to be the list for me. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm pretty confident in saying that Melusine is uh, definitely number one, followed by the other servants. Um, just saying that when Melusine came out, I was saying she's kind of a broken servant. And some people were like, I don't know. Let's let's wait and see. But look at it now, bro. Melusine is absolutely nutty broken. Top and number one on the list right now. But, you know, we'll see how the year goes on. And also, something I just wanted to note this is unrelated to the top five, right? But this is just something that I noticed when I was looking at all the servants. If we go to Avenger, you'll notice there's not a top tier single target arts Avenger. Like we have Jalter who's top tier and Kajikiyo who's top tier, but no Avenger, right? We have two AOE arts Avengers, but not like a really solid single target arts avenger so maybe the new guda guda event we're getting is going to be giving us one of those i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comments down below but with that being said your boy's gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day peace late guys